Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk about a rare genetic disorder that is GNE myopathy. Uh, this is a genetic disorder with a worldwide prevalence of uh, 4 to 21 persons per million and uh, in India also in the last 6 years approximately 59 patients have been reported with this uh, genetic disorder. So, uh, uh, this is a, a rare disease in terms of occurrence but a very uh, you know, a disease with a neglected disorder and this disease is characterized by uh, clinically by the proximal and distal muscle weakness and sparing of quadriceps and as you can see here this is a recent phenotype that has been reported that is the limb girdle, girdle uh, phenotype uh, observed in these patients uh, with this myopathy and uh, this is a slowly progressive neuromuscular disorders that begins usually in the late teens to early adulthood and approximately around 12 years from the onset of the observance of the uh, symptoms that uh, patients become wheelchaired. So the patients that are born they usually up till the teen age they are like normal people and uh, then they are suddenly diagnosed with the muscle weakness and the mutation in the uh, GNE gene to which I will come in a minute. So this is a clinically characterized uh, disease with the muscle atrophy and uh, mainly hitting the proximal and distal muscles and the quadriceps. So pathologically the clinical samples it has been observed in the muscle biopsy samples that there is a presence of rimmed vacuoles which is due to the accumulation of certain proteins like tau, presenilin and uh, muscle atrophy has been observed uh, and the presence of the vacuolar structures have been observed in the muscle samples and uh, uh, mostly this disease uh, is caused due to mutation in the GNE gene and it is an autosomal recessive disorder and at least one missense mutation in one of the allele is observed. So there are a number of mutations more than 80 uh, mutations have been reported uh, in this gene uh, worldwide and mainly in the Japanese, Iranian, Jewish patients with uh, mutations in the different domains of the gene has been reported and in India also we have identified the most common occurrence uh, uh, you know gene mutations has been worked out. So uh, people usually have the compound heterozygous mutation or homozygous mutations that are reported in this gene in one of the early uh, of uh, uh, these uh, of this particular uh, gene. So on the gene level the mutations have been characterized we have identified different mutations but how these mutations cause the disease phenotype at the molecular and the cellular level what is the pathomechanism what is the molecular mechanism that is leading to this disease is not yet to known and that is what we are trying to work together and in addition associated with this particular GNE there is another autosomal dominant disorder which is cellurea and where the infants are born with uh, an enlarged liver and spleen and usually very small RBCs. So these children as you can see in this picture they have flat face, uh, distinctive coarse facial figures, features and uh, this is usually due to the missense mutation in the same uh, gene, uh, uh, gene GNE at the allosteric binding site and uh, this results in the failure of feedback inhibition of the whole enzymatic pathway that I am going to talk about in a minute. So uh, this is also a very rare genetic disorder, uh, very little occurrence, very few people uh, you know uh, are reported around 10 people uh, per year are reported worldwide. Uh, so uh, uh, but this is again a very uh, scary disease. So what I am coming to right now is the GNE and this gene that mutation in this gene leads to two different types of sets that is GNE related myopathy where 
you see muscle weakness pairing of uh, quadriceps and distal and proximal muscle weakness whereas in cell urea due to mutation in the allosteric site you see sometimes the excretion of the sialic acids so uh, what is this gne gne codes for an bifunctional enzyme that is utp n acetyl glucosamine 2 epimerase and n acetyl mannosamine kinase and this means that there are two uh, functional domains and, uh, and that is the n terminal uh, epimerase domain and a c terminal kinase domain this is this is, catalyzes the key regulatory enzyme of sialic acid biosynthesis so what happens is in the cell that glucose is converted into utp glucanag and glucanag is converted into n acetyl mannosamine by the epimerase action of the n terminal domain of this gene and then the phosphorylation of uh, n acetyl mannosamine takes place via the kinase activity and this gets phosphorylated at the 6th position. So, mannex 6 phosphate is formed which is further converted to neuraminic acid 9 phosphate by uh, sialic acid 9 phosphate synthase and then a phosphatase removes this phosphate and converts it into the sialic acid. Now, this sialic acid gets activated inside the nucleus to CMP sialic acid which then moves into the Golgi where uh, various CLL transferases will convert this unit uh, uh, which uh, will add this unit to the growing uh, proteins and make the CLL oligosaccharides or the glycoproteins with the, and, uh, with the terminal alpha-2,6 sialic acid being added on the glycoprotein and then the proteins are expressed on the cell surface or they are reside inside the vesicular membrane waiting for the uh, stimulus to come in and then the, these glycoproteins are recycled back. So, if there is a defect in this particular gene, then the whole sialic acid biosynthetic pathway is uh, inhibited and there is no sialic acid being produced. So, there is hypocellulation of glycoproteins and it is speculated that hypocellulation of glycoprotein is one of the major cause of this particular disease because cell, the proteins should, would not be able to function. However, there is another school of thought which believes that it may not be just hypocellulation of sialic acid of glycoproteins, but there could be other cellular mechanisms that are working in coherence leading to this disease phenotype. And as I said that at the molecular and cellular level, we do not know the exact pathomechanism of the disease. So, this is a very uh, challenging area where we have to uh, work out the different uh, pathways. So, this particular uh, enzyme, as I said, is a bifunctional enzyme. You can see here that there is an N-terminal apimerase domain and a C-terminal kinase domain with an allosteric uh, sites from 263 to 266 residues, where if there is a mutation here, it leads to cellularia, or if there is a mutation in the N-terminal or C-terminal kinase domain, then it leads to GNA-related myopathies. So, uh, uh, this uh, enzyme, a little bit work has been done on its uh, regulation and people have worked out that oligomerization uh, regulates the activity of this gene. So, it is functional only if it is present in the hexameric form and in the monomeric form it displays only the kinase activity and in a, a dimer form uh, it has only the epimerase activity. So, the oligomerization regulates the phosphorylation. This enzyme gets phosphorylated by PKC that uh, in turn regulates its activity and uh, also the feedback inhibition by CMP sialic acid. So, these are the th three different mechanisms by which so far it is known that GNA is regulated and uh, people have tried to work out the ways uh, to understand this particular enzyme and its correlation with the disease by generating the uh, some of the mouse models. However, there is a limitation there because GNA knockout is embryonically lethal. So, it is very difficult to actually see the uh, phenotype and study the uh, how we can look into various molecules and uh, understand the pathomechanism of the disease. So, uh, why we are talking about sialic acid is uh, because uh, these are the acidic sugars with a 9 carbon backbone that are negatively charged and hydrophilic in nature present at the terminal position on the macromolecules and cell membranes and uh, brain has the highest level of sialic acid. 
in the form of sialylated glycolipids. So these sialic acids and the sialylation of the different glycoproteins play very important roles in the cellular function such as signal transduction. Uh, it has been shown that cell addition and cell migration during development is regulated by the sialylation of the proteins and if you remove the sialic acid from these uh, proteins, the terminal sialic acid, then these functions are drastically reduced or affected in the cell. And it has been shown also to provide immunological role such as uh, they serve as ligands for various cell addition molecules, they are involved in the development of T, T cell and B cells and moreover they are involved, associated with the pathogenesis of certain uh, diseases and also involved in the entry of various um, uh, uh, causative agents such as influenza virus, malaria, cholera, uh, bacterial uh, causing agents which gain entry inside the mammalian cells via the glycoproteins uh, at the cell surface which have the sialic acid present and uh, they play a key, key role in the entry of these pathogenic um, you know, uh, organisms. So, so so, sialylation of glycoproteins is important, sialic acid is playing itself a very important role and the whole biosynthesis of sialic acid is crucial for the whole cell development and its role in the pathogenesis. So, uh, it, has been, uh, uh, it has been speculated that hyposialylation is causing the GNE related myopathies but recent studies have also suggested that there could be other roles associated with the GNE and hypocellulation may not be the only causative uh, um, factor for these myopathies. So it has been shown recently that GNE is localized in Golgi and nucleus in addition to the cytoplasm. So we do not know what role it is playing there but it is found to be localized and it influences the expression of gangliosides, it uh, is influences the expression of GM3 synthase, GT3 synthesis and in turn affects the cell proliferation and apoptosis. So GNE uh, regulates at the RNA level the expression of CLL transferases and that in turn reduces the cell proliferation and increases the apoptosis by uh, affecting the BIP levels, ERK level and uh, GT3, GM3 biosynthesis. So there is, uh, uh, there is um, evidence that suggests that there may be alternate role for uh, GNE to play in the cell. And it has been found that DNA interacts with alpha actinin which is a component of uh, focal addition complex that regulates the integrin mediated cell addition. So, However, we do not know what does this interaction of GNA with alpha actinin uh, does. So, uh, the functional uh, aspect of uh, GNA association with focal addition complexes or in terms on a broader aspect, we can say that cytoskeletal machinery that may be affected uh, in case of GNA mutation we do not understand. So we do not know the functional mechanism uh, of GNE interaction with alpha actinin or if there is any with the cytoskeletal network. So, uh, so these may be affected. There is a little line of evidence which suggests that GNE may be play, playing other roles and with this uh, these integrins uh, whether they affect the cell addition or whether GNE has a role to uh, affect the integrin mediated cell addition is unknown and uh, we have been looking into these areas to understand the pathomechanism of uh, this disease. So the one of the major limitation that is associated with these GNE related myopathies is obtaining the muscle biopsy samples and uh, patient samples to do the work studies and I said that mice uh, models are uh, uh, you know, the GNE is embryonically lethal. So, uh, there is a limitation with respect to the development of various, uh, uh, you know, functional assay system and with that, keeping that in mind, we actually developed an HEK cell based model system where we have tried to overexpress different pathologically important mutations of GNE along with the wild type and then set up a system where we uh, look into the cellulation levels and then study the cellular functions. So the first challenge in front of us was to establish a system where we can closely relate to the 
patients uh, you know uh, phenotypic uh, uh, you know cell uh, structure so uh, keeping that in mind we took the pathologically relevant mutations such as uh, d176v that is present in the apimerase domain here then which is the second most common uh, uh, you know mutation that is observed in the japanese Uh, population and B572L is the most frequent uh, common uh, Japanese mutation that is observed B572L in the kinase domain and then there in uh, M712T which is the most common mutation found in the Iranian Jews. So these uh, mutations we focused on in our first study and we tried to Uh, generate these mutants by side directed mutagenesis and then we check by sequencing that we have the right kind of mutations in place and then we over express these in the HEK cell lines and we observe the uh, right kind of recombinant protein that is ATK that is being produced and in addition we also looked into two other mutations C303X which is a null mutation and uh, here after 303 amino acid there is a Uh, a stop codon and in M712T, as I said, that there is a methionine to threonine uh, conversion at 712 position. So all these mutants were expressed in the HEK uh, cell lines as stable, and then we also generated a knockdown of uh, endogenous GNE, where endogenous GNE expression was inhibited by the overexpression of an SHRNA targeted towards the GNE gene, and we observed. approximately 70% reduction in the gne expression at, as it is observed by the immunoblotting with anti gne so having all these cell lines being set up which were over expressing different kinds of mutants as well as the endogenous gne being knocked down we uh, further estimated the epimerase and kinase activity of these mutants and we found that uh, the epimerase mutant showed significant inhibition in the activity of uh, uh, epimerase domain and uh, the kinase mutants they show significant inhibition in the activity of kinase uh, uh, kinase the kinase mutants showed the significant active inhibition in the activity of uh, in uh, in kinase activity so here uh, we have uh, seen that you see here uh, the there is 40% reduction in the kinase activity whereas 22% in the d176v whereas uh, in v5712l there is 25% uh, inhibition in the activity of uh, uh, epimerase and 56% in the epi uh, in the kinase activity so Uh, so uh, there is a little correlation if you inhibit the epimerase domain then it also uh, inhibits the kinase activity and vice versa if there is a mutation in the kinase domain then it also inhibits the activity of the epimerase domain and um, so uh, this was also studied in past where a significant correlation between the epimerase and kinase activity of domains were observed and we have in turn then seen that whether this inhibition in activity is translated into the sialic acid content of the cell and when we <coughs> looked at the sialylation levels of the proteins uh, in the membranes and cytosol we found that not only the total sialic acid content of the cell was inhibited in these mutant cell lines there was significant inhibition in the cytosolic fraction as well as the membranous Uh, fraction where the glycoconjugates which are normally sialylated are hypersialylated so uh, so we see that there is almost 50% reduction in the total sialic acid content and there is uh, more than uh, 75% inhibition in the epimerase activity of d176v and uh, uh, 75% activity inhibition in case of v5712l mutation in the kinase activity and is similarly we have also observed with the m712t cell lines that there is a significant inhibition in the epimerase activity of the epimerase uh, mutant and the kinase activity of the uh, uh, kinase mutant and that in turn led to the significant inhibition of the sialic acid content uh, of uh, uh, these mutant and if you supplement with uh, 5 millimolar uh, sialic acid then you see the restoration of sialylation levels so this 
suggest that uh, uh, there is functional inhibition of epimerase and kinase activity and if you supplement it back with the 5 millimolar nana then again there is a restoration of cellulation level suggesting the uh, system is working fine and similarly we did uh, with the GNE knockdown studies also and we found that GNE knockdown had significant inhibition in the epimerase and kinase activity and also if you restore with the uh, you know uh, the sialic acid or its precursor then all these cell lines show restoration in terms of sialic acid content. So our uh, this uh, whole system seems functional and closely related to the uh, patient uh, cell uh, morphology where we see that the GNE is mutation is working fine that if the GNE is mutated then there is significant inhibition in the GNE activity that is translated into reduced sialic acid content of the cell and uh, hypocellulation of proteins in the cytosol as well as membrane and if you supplement it with the sialic acid or its precursor then you observe the restoration of the uh, normal sialic acid content suggesting that we have a foolproof system now which can be used to mimic the uh, you know uh, patient uh, or the GNE myopathy uh, cell behavior. So our first question was whether uh, GNE that is mutated is it localizing at the right positions in the cell such as it has been observed that it is in the cytosol, it is in the Golgi or it is in the nucleus but what is the localization of the mutated GNE so that it is not able to perform the function or if it is involved in other function in case of mutated GNE and affecting the cell uh, physiology then uh, how is it located inside the cell. So to address this we first did the immunofluorescence to see all these recombinant proteins using antimic antibody and we observed that wild type GNA is cytosolic without and also the D176V but we observed a different localization of V572L uh, and we observed that it is uh, look like a perinuclear kind of a localization which was quite interesting for us to move ahead and then we used different subcellular markers to see where uh, these mutated GNE are localized. So we first looked into the nuclear markers by head staining and we saw that in the mutants also as well as in the wild type there is a um, uh, you know the localization of GNE as well as mut mutated GNE inside the nucleus as it is reported earlier and similarly with the Golgi marker that is Golgi 97 there is a localization of wild type GNE in the Golgi as well as the mutated GNE is found inside the nucleus and also as I said B5712 showed lot of perinuclear kind of localization. So when we looked into the ER marker to our surprise GRP94, uh, we found that uh, there is an increased co-localization of mutated GNE with uh, GRP94 and uh, we observed almost 50% localization in case of D176V while uh, around 70% localization, co-localization with GRP94 uh, in case of kinase mutant that is V5712L. So uh, this actually clearly showed that there is an increased retention of mutated GNE inside the nucleus, uh, inside the ER and uh, uh, there is preferential uh, retention in the ER and there have been reports recently which say, suggest that probably where the cells where GNE is mutated there is an ER stress response that gets activated and there may be an activation of UPR pathway. So uh, we also uh, studied and further confirmed this result by subcellular fractionation uh, of uh, these various uh, uh, cells and we found that there is a preferential localization of mutated GNE in ER in addition to Golgi and the cytoplasmic fraction. So <coughs> this uh, increased retention uh, of GNE and there was some uh, also with the 
you know, if you see, we looked into the ER marker GRP94 immunoblotting and alpha manosidase 2 for, as a Golgi marker. So uh, we found that uh, this is in the fraction 2. So there is some localization in the Golgi also, and we wanted to see whether this enzyme is active and how is it placed with respect to the activity. And uh, we observed that the wild type GNE was active in uh, cytosolic and the Golgi fraction, whereas this mutated GNE, as expected, was not functional in the ER fraction. So, uh, these uh, cytosolic and Golgi fractions uh, showed uh, the complete activity of the wild type GNE, whereas the mutant proteins were inactive, uh, which were sitting inside the Golgi and nucleus. So this suggests that uh, the proteins that are sitting inside the ER, the G mutated GNE, may have some other roles or may be contributing to the aggregation of the proteins, uh, whether it has any chaperonic activity or how is it correlating with the activation of UPR pathway, may be uh, uh, question to address. So we studied uh, the expression levels of UPR pathway protein and we found that GRP94 is actually upregulated in GNE mutated cell lines. So, uh, so there is definitely a correlation between the GNE mutations and the ER stress pathway or the activation of uh, UPR pathway which needs to be worked out. So uh, uh, we actually uh, this is the first report where we have shown that mutation in GNE causes altered localization of GNE that too uh, with increased retention in the ER that may have some functional significance. And um, so then uh, we, as I said that we were looking into what are the basic cell functions that are affected due to mutation in GNE and uh, our first focus uh, was on um, you know, the cell addition mechanism where people have reported that hypocellulation of integrin leads to the addition uh, changes or alteration in the addition pattern of the cells. So we wanted to see whether mutation in GNE that is affecting the cellulation of the glycoproteins at the cell surface probably may be uh, in case of beta-1 beta integrin that is uh, important muscle strengthening protein that is present on the cell surface of muscle cells. So whether that is affected and whether it is affecting the cell addition mechanism of these cells uh, was a question to address and also we were interested in looking at why there is an increased uh, apoptosis of uh, cells in the patients uh, of uh, uh, GNE related myopathy which occurs towards the late stages. So uh, in order to address this question uh, of uh, whether mutation in GNE affects the cell addition process, we first studied the various substrates such as uh, of the extracellular matrix like laminin, fibronectin, and collagen, and we found that after uh, mutation or the knockdown of GNE, the fibronectin <coughs> substrate gave uh, a good increase, uh, significant increase in the addition uh, of uh, these cell lines, which where GNE was knocked down by the uh, inhibition in the uh, endogenous GNE expression. And we further did the time close randomization, and we found that two hour was a good time point to tell us about the sig uh, significant increase in the addition of uh, uh, of uh, cells in response to fibronectin stimulation. However, when we looked at the cell migration through time lapse uh, imaging studies over a period of uh, 24 hours, we did not see significant increase uh, increase or alteration in terms of uh, uh, cell migration. So. Uh, this suggests that mutation in GNE is affecting the cell addition. It is causing significant increase in the uh, addition of the cells in response to fibronectin uh, stimulation. And uh, since beta-1 integrins are the key molecules, we looked into the first the cellulation of these integral molecules that are present on the cell surface. And uh, when we did the lectin affinity, uh, chromatography or assay where you actually using lectin you accumulate the various uh, uh, cellulated proteins and then biotin related lectin and then you dot it with the 
uh, beta 1 integrin specific antibody to identify the integrin molecules we observed that the cell lines where gna was mutated the integrin molecules migrated at a much faster rate indicating an hypocellulation of uh, integrins so hypocellulation of integrin is causing a reduced uh, molecular weight of integrins and hence higher electrophoretic mobility on uh, STS page gels which is what we observed in case of these mutant cell lines as well as the GNE knockdown and this was also uh, taken uh, as a positive control where neuraminidase treated uh, integrins were used as a positive control. So what neuraminidase does is remove the alpha 2 6 sialic acid uh, from the cell surface protein so these integrins were removed. Uh, uh, where alpha 2 6 sialic acid was removed and migrated and we found that the cell lines where G, uh, sialic acid biosynthesis was inhibited the integrin molecules migration correlated with the neuraminidase treated control indicating that yes the integrin molecules that are present on the cell surface of these uh, 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 mutated cell lines are hypocellulated so we further wanted to see whether there is a change in the localization of integrins in these uh, wild type GNE versus mutated cell lines because uh, the integrin signal take place at the cell surface. So we found that in case of vector as well as the wild type GNE uh, overexpressed cell lines, these uh, integrins were present on the cell membrane and also in the SHRNA vector control. But when GNE is mutated, most of this integrin molecule is localized inside the vesicles or inside the cytosol. So it was a clear distinct localization of GNE in knockdown and mutated GNE cell lines indicating uh, intravesicular uh, uh, you know, localization of the integrin. And if you supplement these cells with sialic acid then it uh, cycles back to the cell surface in case of mutant GNE cell lines. So this indicates that mutation in GNE is one thing causing hypocellulation of integrin and second thing it is causing altered localization of integrins in the internal vesicles. So uh, these hypocellulated integrins are not present on the cell membrane as in case of wild type GNE but they are localized in the internal vesicles and then the next question is whether upon fibronectin stimulation which is the substrate then uh, uh, you know does it affect the mobilization of uh, uh, integrin molecules because we have seen increased addition. So we found that after fibronectin stimulation again there is an increased localization of beta 1 integrin on the cell surface in case of mutated GNE cell lines. So this indicates that migration of hypocellulated integrin to the cell membrane is not affected but it is the protein that is expressed on the cell surface after fibronectin or any stimulation is indeed hypocellulated but the migration per se is not affected. It is localized in the internal vesicles but upon stimulation there is uh, uh, increased localization on the cell surface. So when we look at the co-localization of integrins, uh, you know when we look at the hypocellulated integrin that is present on the cell surface and there have been report where after neuraminidase treatment uh, when the sialic acid is removed, there is uh, still increased addition. So how an addition takes place is because the hypocellulation is making a conformational change in the uh, conformational change in integrin and the downstream signaling effect uh, is increased addition. So there are uh, uh, focal addition complexes being formed, there is increased SARC signaling but uh, leading to enhanced uh, addition because the uh, the integrin which is hypocellulated has an altered conformation that has increased binding to fibronectin and in turn the signal is relayed downstream. So we checked that if we have the fibronectin stimulation in case of GNE mutant cell lines what happens with respect to the downstream signaling of integrin and we found that there are 
looking at the co-localization with focal addition kinases, we found that there are specific spots where there is increased localization, co-localization of integrin with FAC indicating an increased signaling response. So there were more number of uh, focal addition complexes being observed in the GNE mutant cell and the knockdown cell lines uh, as opposed to the uh, wild type, uh, recombinant wild type GNE. And uh, further downstream, we have seen that this FAC, which is co-localized with integrin, is indeed activated. There is increased activation of FAC. We look at the phosphorylation stated by, by PFAC antibody, and we observed that uh, this FAC is uh, phosphorylated, it is activated, and in turn, the, the downstream molecule, that is the SARC tyrosine kinase that is involved in the formation of these focal addition complexes is also activated with increased phosphorylation in both mutants as well as the knockdown cell line. So this indicates that GNE <coughs> mutation that is causing the hypocellulation of integrin residing the integrin vesicle uh, in the intravesicular uh, uh, membranes inside the cell, but upon fibronectin stimulation, these molecules migrate to the uh, cell membrane and bind effectively to fibronectin and mediate the downstream signaling. To the contrary, actually, when we looked at the MAP kinase pathway, we found that PERK is actually down-regulated in mutant cell lines as well as GNE knockdown. And this could be uh, because of the activation of uh, phos phosphatase that is responsible for dephosphorylation of, P, uh, of ERK and uh, that may again stimulate the integrin uh, pathway. So, uh, so, uh, so this in turn indirectly suggests that there could be an activation of a phosphatase that is leading to the ERK dephosphorylation and hence we have observed the reduced phosphorylation of P of uh, V572 L and D176V mutant cell lines. So I summarize here uh, by saying that you have uh, in case where the GNE is mutated, the sialic acid, uh, uh, you observe the hypocellulation of proteins in the cytosol, in the membrane, and this in turn uh, leads to decreased uh, sialic acid content of the cell. And in turn we have seen that mutation in GNE causes the increased retention in the ER and there is a decreased GNE enzymatic activity of uh, in mutant cells. So this in turn uh, leads to maybe an activation of a UPR pathway and ER stress that is being created inside the cell. In addition, when we have seen that there is decreased sialic acid and hypocellulation of the protein, one of the molecules that we have studied is the integrin where we clearly observe the hypocellulation of integrin molecule and this hypocellulation, hypocellulated integrin uh, due to con altered conformational change, it leads to increased binding to, to the fibronectin and hence there is an increased cell addition because there is an integrin clustering that gets activated after fibronectin stimulation that results in the activation of FAC and SARC. So hypocellulation is binding, is leading to increased binding to the fibronectin and also activation of the downstream signaling cascade that is leading to uh, increased cell addition via activation of FAC and SARC molecules. So our uh, study clearly indicates a role of GNE that may be involved in the other uh, cytoskeletal also networking, the processes, the proteins that are involved, uh, and especially the addition process where integrin molecules are involved. So this opens up a new area where we can look into different proteins that may serve as the drug targets for uh, this particular disease. Uh, this we have published in uh, Molecular Neurobiology recently. Then our second question was, uh, uh, when we have looked into various uh, reports where it has been shown that uh, these patients, uh, muscle biopsy samples, they show an increased apoptosis, the GNE expression has been correlated with the uh, cell proliferation and apoptotic uh, process, and uh, uh, they have not only observed increased apoptotic signal in, in HIBM cells, but even some of the human pancreatic carcinoma cells which undergo apoptosis upon uh, GNE gene silencing, they also show 
uh, affect with respect to apoptosis. And also, uh, there are certain reports where microarray analysis on HIBM muscle specimens, they have shown that there are certain, uh, uh, you know, large amount of mitochondrial proteins that are affected and they are differentially expressed, but we do not know the role, what are they doing. And uh, there is uh, also some reports which suggest that there is an increased caspase 3 and caspase 9 activation in the HIBM cells. So these studies uh, intrigued us to study whether GNE has a direct role in apoptosis, whether GNE can uh, directly affect. So what affect the apoptosis process? And to address this, uh, we, uh, we wanted to see uh, uh, first, the direct comparison of different pathologically relevant cell lines that we have generated. So whether each mutation that is causing a hypocellulation or reduced sialic acid content in the cell, is it directly correlating with the apoptosis of cells? So, uh, you know, and in turn that is leading to the diseased pathophysiology is was the question that we were trying to address. So we first see, we looked into and studied the effect of GNE mutation on cell proliferation and we found that by MTT assay that uh, uh, there was significant reduction in the cell proliferation of cells with various mutant uh, cell lines of GNE and when we add the 5 millimolar neuraminic acid again we observed the restoration uh, in the cell proliferation of cells and one of the uh, markers of uh, uh, proliferation that is prolifer uh, proliferating cell nuclear antigen was also found to be reduced in uh, various mutant cell lines compared to the vector and the wild type GNE control. So uh, this suggests that uh, yes, cell, pro cell proliferation is indeed inhibited <coughs> in, uh, uh, in these cell lines where there is a deficiency of GNE. And uh, then uh, since uh, this cell proliferation and apoptotic movements have been observed in these uh, patient muscle biopsy samples. We observe, we wanted to study how the cell apoptosis is affected and one way uh, is to look at the nuclear fragmentation of these cells and this we studied by terminal assay where you, uh, you look at the terminal uh, UDP and labeling of uh, uh, the of the DNA that is being done. So, and you look at the nuclear fragmentation by appearance of the green color fluorescent um, uh, dye that is there, and you look at you look at the quantitative analysis, and we see that in various mutant cells there is an increased fluorescence, green fluorescence here indicated indicating of. Uh, increased number of apoptotic cells in these mutant cell lines compared to wild type and uh, uh, vector controls. And uh, the another way to look at and measure quantitative uh, assay to look for the cell apoptosis is the externalization of PS, of uh, phosphatidylserine, and that is measured by the binding of an exin 5. So we look at an exin 5 fit C positive cells and as it is clearly shown in the fax analysis that the cells with the mutant GNE they have very high increased number of an exin 5 uh, positive cells as you see in this quadrant and there is an increased uh, apoptosis compared to the uh, wild type GNE or vector control in all the cell lines very high significant increase in the number of uh, apoptotic or an exin 5 positive cells indicative of uh, apoptosis and uh, we look into the different apoptotic signaling molecules so there are so once apoptosis is activated as we have seen due to externalization of PS the downstream molecules that are affected are procaspases that convert for example procaspase 3 to activated caspases that are responsible for mediating the apoptosis. So we observe that in these mutant cell lines there is a reduction in the levels of procaspase 3 which indicates that procaspase 3 is getting cleaved into activated caspase uh, due to the induction of apoptosis and also there is an increased formation of uh, 
part. So you see the increased levels of cleave part that is again responsible for the uh, nuclear fragmentation. So uh, these results clearly indicate that uh, there is an apoptotic phenomenon being activated in the cells with the uh, GNE uh, mutant um, where GNE is mutated or GNE is non-functional. So what could be the possible mechanism that is leading to apoptosis? Now apoptosis is caused either at by the two different pathways. One is by the extrinsic uh, pathway where uh, one of the receptor molecules which uh, might be for example if it is hypocyalylated it may uh, you know activate the downstream signaling cascade leading to apoptosis or it could be uh, the intrinsic pathway where mitochondria is involved and there is a mitochondrial dysfunction and mitochondrial morphostructural changes that are being observed so since previous reports have indicated that there are uh, changes uh, with respect to the mitochondrial proteins being expressed in these HIPM muscle biopsy cells we looked into the morphostructural changes of mitochondria by uh, transmission electron microscopy and as you can see that in case of vector as well as wild type GNE the mitochondria is much more like a normal with normal cristae and uh, normal structure of uh, uh, mitochondria was observed but in case of V5712 mutant, D176V uh, mutants you see large big vacuoles in mitochondria and the cristae were uh, you know not clearly visible so there is more vacuolar and swollen structures observed in case of V572L and D176V and there is some differences with respect to the M712T where it was not that prominent so we have also observed uh, in case of uh, you know previous reports that M712T mutation may have uh, uh, different uh, you know uh, pathomechanism leading to the disease phenotype and uh, we observe here that it is to a lesser extent uh, as compared to V572L and D176V and also when we looked into the uh, serialization status of M712T these cells did not show that good uh, inhibition in the sialic acid content as well as the restoration with the 5 millimolar nana. So we, we believe that M712T mutation has a different pathway of affecting uh, leading to the pathogenesis of uh, GNE myopathy. And when we observe the morphostructural changes in the uh, mitochondria, then uh, one of the major uh, uh, study that involves is to look into the function of the mitochondria by looking at the membrane uh, polarization. So uh, these mitochondrial membrane, uh, when they are aggregated, they they are uh, they appear red due to the JC1 dye binding but as they depolarizes and turn into the monomeric form then there is green fluorescence being observed. So here uh, we have uh, quantitated the change from red to green fluorescence in case of uh, GNE wild type versus the mutant cell lines and we observe that there is actually indeed significant uh, you, know, uh, you know change in the uh, from aggregate to the monomeric form indicating the membrane depolarization and as you can see clearly in this merged figure that there is a lot of orange uh, color due to the merge of this red and green being observed in the mutated cell line. So there is a clear shift from red to green that is from uh, aggregate to the monomeric form of uh, uh, this JC1 dye which indicates the mitochondrial membrane depolarization. So, uh, so our results clearly indicate that there is uh, mitochondria involved uh, in the apoptotic mechanism of these cells and uh, this could be due to the intrinsic pathway where mitochondria is uh, affected. So uh, we propose that uh, this uh, GNE mutation that is causing hypocellulation of the protein and is responsible for the GNE myopathy on one hand leads to the increased retention of mutated GNE in the ER stress where it may be involved in the activation of the UPR pathway. On uh, other hand it is involved in the uh, decellulation of glycoconjugates that are causing the changes in the morphostructural changes in the mitochondria that may indeed lead to the activation of caspases that is pro-caspase 
is converted into caspases and that in turn lead to the uh, part cleavage inside the nucleus leading to the nuclear fragmentation that is causing uh, apoptosis of the cell. So uh, here at least we have uh, proof for two of the main functional um, functions of the cell where cell addition mechanism on one hand is affected directly by GNE mutation and also the apoptosis uh, is that is being observed in the various uh, JBM muscle phenotype where we have shown for the first time that it is it could be due to the mitochondrial uh, mediated uh, apoptotic behavior that is observed in the GNE mutant cell lines. So, uh, so I would like to conclude here that we have now a functional system that can mimic uh, uh, patient biology um, and we can look and address various cellular functions where we have now HGK293 cells which are overexpressing the different pathologically relevant mutations and uh, also we have a knockdown cell line to make sure that endogenous GNA is knocked down and look into then address and study various uh, uh, functions of the cell. And uh, this is the first report that suggests that there is an increased retention of mutated GNE inside the ER that may be leading to the activation of UPR pathway and also the deserialization of integrin receptors is leading to the increased adhesion that is due to the mutation in GNE that is causing the reduced cellulation that is causing the uh, hypocellulation of integrin receptors and its mislocalization that is affecting the addition of the cells. And lastly, we'll conclude that there is a direct effect on cell proliferation and apoptosis due to GNE mutations. And uh, uh, one important thing is to see is uh, that each mutation uh, may be having uh, its own pathway and, it, and we need to address each of the different mutations uh, individually to understand the pathomechanism of the disease which would be quite challenging. So uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Professor Alok Bhattacharya for constant inspiration and guidance uh, throughout the project. We have received financial assistance from uh, DST, ICMR and CSIR. So we would like to thank uh, for uh, all the financial assistance. All the confocal and transmission electron microscopy work was done at uh, Advanced Instrument Research Facility at GNU. And uh, I would like to thank all the technical staff who have helped us in generating all the data. And uh, here are my uh, PhD students. So Sonam has worked mainly on uh, generation of uh, HEK stable cell lines and uh, as well as the localization and the cell addition mechanism. And she has been awarded PhD degree. And my second student, uh, Rima, is working on the apopto apoptosis mechanism. And she has looked into various uh, mutations and the uh, apoptotic uh, <coughs> uh, behavior of the cells and compared with the each mutations and then actually besides mitochondria our one of the unknown uh, unpublished data is about the IGF1R signaling where we speculate that they may be also involved in the apoptosis and we have observed hypocellulation of IGF1R so she is working on uh, this area and uh, I would like to thank all these people who have worked very hard in the initial years of establishment of the lab and uh, uh, thank you all for giving me the opportunity. I would like to take any questions.